now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way.
What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and we're kicking off today's double feature with Chapter 5 of the Disney Plus original series, The Santa Clauses. This chapter entitled Across the Yuleverse, starring Tim Allen, Elizabeth Mitchell, Austin Kane, Elizabeth Allen Dick, Matilda Lawler, Devin Bright, Rupali Red, Cal Penn, Mitch Polus, Mauricio Mendoza, Dirk Rogers, Jim O'Hare, and David Krumholtz. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the introduction, we're going to kick off today's double feature of reviews with Chapter 5 of the Disney Plus original series, The Santa Clauses. And our episode opens with Carol, Cal, and Sandra Calvin all being frozen in time, and a hand reaching out to touch Scott's shoulder. Scott turns around and sees Bernard, his former head elf. We discover that Bernard met a woman and gave up his life as an elf for her. Bernard then tries to tell Scott about Simon, but Scott plays it off as if it's not his problem, causing he and Bernard to bicker. Bernard tries to tell Scott to Santa up, and Scott points out that it was all an accident anyways. Someone fell off his roof, and boom, he was Santa. Realizing that Scott has a very different perception of what happened all those years ago, Bernard decides to show Scott the truth. Bernard takes Scott back to the Great Depression, where he meets the 17th Santa, who gives out oranges and socks to the children of the time. Santa tells Scott, that he ended up choosing the wrong replacement for him because he wasn't meant to step down yet. Santa proceeds to tell Scott that it's a feeling in his heart that will let him know when it truly is time. Scott tries to run away and return to his own time, but instead he enters a room where he meets Papa Noel and Krampus. Krampus points Scott to a door, and when he goes through it, he once again finds the 17th Santa and Bernard awaiting him. Santa then tells Scott that the evening he fell off Scott's roof wasn't the first time they had met. Suddenly, Scott is transported back into time to the house he grew up in. We are shown a very young Scott interacting with Santa one Christmas Eve. Santa asks Scott why he believes in him and Scott tells him that it was a feeling in his heart, kind of like a little whisper. Santa tells young Scott Calvin that he believes that one day he will make the world a better place. Older Scott admits that he doesn't remember the interaction, and Santa confesses to dusting him so he'd forget the interaction. When Scott asks Bernard why he didn't tell him about this, Bernard says that believing is seeing. Santa and Bernard then take Scott through another door, where this time he is introduced to St. Nicholas himself. St. Nicholas says that it was never about the gifts, that it was about the giving. St. Nicholas's parents were wealthy, and when they died, he inherited their fortune. But rather than keep it all to himself, he gave it away to those less fortunate. St. Nicholas excuses himself to go and begin making his rounds, but before he leaves, he tells Scott that he lives on within him. Santa then tells Scott that he is the first human Santa, and he was chosen so that kids could be born at the North Pole in order to inherit the mantle of Claus. All of the Santas from all time begin to enter the room as Bernard pulls out his snow globe and asks it to show Scott the North Pole. Back at the pole, 
Betty is talking to Pontoon, one of the elves, who is sad about what has been going on. When Pontoon loses her hope, she disappears into thin air. Scott then gets the fire back in him to do something about this. And one of the Santas makes a comment about beginning to regret giving a human all of this power when Bernard steps up. Bernard tells all the Santas that they had their own flaws and how the elves always picked up their slack. He goes on to say that he was against the Scott experiment from the beginning, how he thought it was apocalyptic in nature, how he always thought Scott would quit, but he didn't. And in turn, he ended up becoming the best Santa ever. Bernard then gives Scott the snow globe, which will allow him access back to the North Pole. We then see Simon and Grace talking about her mom. And Grace asks if Christmas every day is supposed to make people happy. Why are so many people sad? Back at the Calvin house, Scott tells the family that he needs to go back to the North Pole because he retired way too soon. Scott explains what is going on with Simon and that they were the first humans ever at the pole, hand-picked. The clauses were created just for them, etc. Carol, Cal, and Sandra insist on coming along, but when they go to get some stuff, Scott and Noel transport back to the pole. Scott goes to stop Simon while Noel goes to find Betty, only for the rest of the Calvin clan to discover that they were ditched. Cal's girlfriend Riley then shows up and compliments Sandra's shirt, and when she orders one and it's immediately delivered, Carol discovers how the Christmas spirit is dwindling. Betty then stumbles upon Grace, playing the harp and tells her how pretty it sounds. Grace asks about the elves disappearing, and Betty confirms it. She tells Grace that elves are made from Christmas spirit, and that they could be gone forever. Grace tells Betty that she wants to do whatever she can to help, and Betty tells her to believe. Believe with all of your heart. In the spirit of Christmas, and all that is good. When Betty leaves her conversation with Grace, she disappears into thin air, just as Noel rounds the corner, missing her by that much. Meanwhile, Cal explains to Riley that he has to leave and why, but she doesn't believe him. He tells her to wait up on Christmas Eve for Santa, and she'll see that it is his dad but Riley tells Cal that she doesn't believe in Santa anymore. However, when Cal mentions the toy that her little brother wants for Christmas, she begins to wonder. Carol, Cal, and Sandra grab a horse from a nearby stable and convince it to fly to the North Pole in order to help Scott. Meanwhile, Scott gets caught in a Santa trap set by Simon who proceeds to throw him into jail, just as our episode comes to its close. This was definitely one of the better episodes on a whole of the entire series thus far, and we've only got one left, the season finale, because it has been reported the show has been picked up for a second season for Disney+, Plus, which I'm ecstatic about, but I admit, even though it's dropped at this point on Disney+, Plus. As of filming this, I have yet to see the final episode. I'm waiting. I think I'm going to watch it on Christmas Day, if I'm being honest. But I I really enjoyed this episode. And the fact that David Krumholtz finally came back as Bernard. And it was him who reached out, froze time, and touched Scott's shoulder at the end of the previous episode. Just made it so good knowing that Bernard was back. We all kind of assumed that that's whose hand was reaching out to tap Scott. But just that moment of reunion between Scott and Bernard was so heartfelt and warming. And then you get 
all these other Santas from history. And you see Papa Noel, and you see St. Nicholas, and you see the Santa that Scott replaced. Even Krampus, the Santa of the Dark Ages. And you realize that Bernard worked with them all. And the one constant at the North Pole throughout all these Santas was Bernard. And for Bernard to then say that Scott was the greatest Santa of them all, that just right there in the heart. Because Scott has been our Santa since 1994, ever since the original movie, and he first put on that coat. So that acknowledgement, that, that recognition from Bernard to Scott, as much as we love to hear it, I can only imagine how much it meant for Scott. So when he then decides to go and Santa up, as Bernard put it, go back to try to save the day, it just makes that moment more impactful. Again, y'all know I'm not reviewing and rating every episode. You're going to have to wait for my rating of the whole series next week when we do the final episode. But like I said, I... I really enjoyed this episode. Next to episode one and two with the setup and the return of Charlie. This is probably my favorite. Like, I'm not sure how I would rank them. I'd have to go back and rewatch everything. Episode three and four, as good as they were, as fun as they were, they just kind of felt a lot like filler. But we'll have to see how my opinion on that changes once the entire series is out and I'm going to watch the final episode. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch them through no interruptions and we'll see kind of how I feel about it then. But such a solid episode this week. What did you guys think of chapter five across the Yule verse for the Disney plus original series, the Santa Clauses? Let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction that I'm always asking for in the comments below. And make sure you stay tuned at the top of the half hour. Right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And we're going to kick off the first... In this franchise, we're only covering the first two, though, as they are chestnuts. We're going to take a look at Home Alone, starring Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern, Catherine O'Hara, John Hurd, Devin Ratray, and John Candy. And again, I, I acknowledge the fact that there are five films in the franchise, but we are only going to take a look at the first two as they are the best two. They are the ones that you would consider a Christmas chestnut. So that being said, make sure you guys also tune in tomorrow right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when we will take a look at Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Starring Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern, John Hurd, Catherine O'Hara, Tim Curry, Brenda Fricker, Eddie Bracken, Rob Schneider, Ali Sheedy, and Donald Trump. But that is not the end of it, folks, because tomorrow night, special night, at 8 o'clock Pacific, 11 Eastern, join us for the Eve of Christmas Eve special edition of Open Mic Night. We did not want to do open mic night on Christmas Eve, as that is time for you guys to be with your families, but we wanted to make sure that we did get an episode in this week, so we moved it to Friday night. Myself, Noah Foster, the simple man, the Heeb man, James Hebert, Jeff Meacham, the West Coast professor will be on hand. We might have a few other drop-ins. We're going to be talking Christmas. We're not going to be talking wrestling. Unless you guys super chat a wrestling topic you want us to discuss, then of course we will acknowledge you Roman Reigns style and we will discuss that topic. Also, for a $5 donation, you guys will get to spin the Wheel of Carols. And whatever song pops up, 
the four of us and whoever our guests are will sing. So make sure you tune in. You don't want to miss out on any of that content right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, on Renegades Reviews, on Open Mic Night. We've got so much in store for you. The month is almost over, but we've still got like a week and a half to go. Nothing but great holiday content, so you don't want to miss out on it. That being said, make sure you smash that like button, make sure you're subscribed, make sure that notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out any time a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or any time we go live, as is the case with Open Mic Night, Stack Boy Sports Bar, pay-per-view PLE coverage, etc. Share these videos with your family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, movie fanatics, cinephiles in your life, fans of the Santa Claus franchise, fans of Tim Allen, Fans of David Krumholtz, fans of Elizabeth Mitchell, fans of Christmas in general. Anybody you can think of that would enjoy this content in my videos, share it with them. It's the only way we're going to boost my visibility up in YouTube's algorithms so I can eventually get monetized and start making some money on this content. Thank you once again to everyone who joined me and tuned in today. It means more to me than you'll ever know. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.